In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The dominion mandate is inside. That's why the Bible says, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. I confer the blessing on your life today. I confer your mighty hand of blessing upon their lives. Welcome to Expand Your World with Pastor David Ibuili. We'll get back to that. Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Verse 13. The Lord blessed him. Please, verse 13. Genesis 26. <laughs> Does that Bible have verse 13? Okay. And the man works great and went forward and grew until he became very great. His father was great. This one went and became during famine. It's those seven years. Remember what Joseph did in Egypt? Those seven years when Joseph and all the nations were coming to look at. You would think Joseph was the first guy. Look at his ancestors have been doing this thing. Because this thing moves in cycles. And even if it comes to your time, you go back and look at how you gain wisdom for your own time. Look at how his ancestors survived during famine. The man grew until he became very great. Add one more verse, verse 14. And he had possessions of flock, possessions of herd, great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord gave me a prophetic word for you. He said, that's what is going to happen to you if you can tap into the wisdom of God. At the end of this whole thing, some of you by the end of this year, some of you by the end of next year, some of you by the end, you will be on another level when you look back where you used to be. You will thank God that the pandemic came. Don't you know that the Bible said that everything that the enemy means for evil, God turns it for good, for advantage to his own children. He said that all things work together for good to them that love God who are called according to his purpose. Yes, Satan did this to destroy lives. But God has a way of turning everything he does by his wisdom to the advantage of his children. In the midst of this thing, wealth transfer is going on again. It has started again. Position yourself. <laughs> Position yourself, my friends. Position yourself. Don't go there and sit down and be telling stories, how pandemic, where people are losing jobs. It's time you start creating the jobs. Don't wait for them to sack you. Create an alternative source of income. Create your own company by the side. And keep working on one day they said that whatever but then there are also some kind of solution you start carrying no company can sack a daniel or a joseph they need that thing you have to grow their industry to the next level it is during famine that the josephs and the daniels get their greatest employment their greatest people will be beating over their head because of the level of innovation and the capacity that they carry inside them. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? And some people are wasting this lockdown instead of using it to build capacity. There are a lot of online trainings going on. I, I know one of my daughters that I talked to, she has gotten two or three degrees within this period. Not four years degrees, short, short courses. <laughs> Glory, glory be to the name of Jesus. 
they had positions of flock positions of heads great stores of servant where other people were ruined and philistines envied them let me read one more verse verse 15 for, for look at the secret for all the wells which his father's servant had digged in the days of abraham his father the philistines had stopped them and filled them with the earth that's what we call redigging the wells of your fathers you do it in the area of finance and wealth creation you do it in the area of prophetic knowledge you want to understand prophets go and find out what the pioneers of the faith of generation have said about some of these things don't go and start reinventing certain things but now the philistines have covered all of these wells they filled them with earth so what did this guy do he redug all the wells that abraham did look at it verse 16 and abimelech said to isaac go from us for you are much mightier than we but before you put verse 16 put verse 15. okay verse 16. the king of the philistine came to meet me he said please you need to leave our country you are mighty one man is mightier than the whole country mightier than government go from us for you are much mightier than we You are mighty. You need to see the kind of wealth he, he left that land and returned to the promised land. It was actually during this famine that God established him and fulfilled a covenant that he made to Abraham that he was going to bless his son Isaac. It was also during famine that God established Abraham financially. The eagle flies highest against the wind, not along with the wind. It's when the wind is counter that it goes show us high. It's when there's bushfire that the eagle catches the highest prey. Because when there's fire, all the animals are running out. Then he just dives into the smoke, pick this antelope. Then he goes up, drop. he dives again and pick that rodent. Then he dives again and pick that thing. Don't get confused like the rest of the world. This is your moment of opportunity. Hey. This is your moment. Please, can, 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 get bus talk, buyer, can you lift up your hand and tell God, Lord, open my eyes to understand what you are sending this man to bring my way. Open my eyes to see and help me to understand what to do. Open my eyes to see around you that your city where you are living. There are so many opportunities. Convert all these problems to opportunities. Every problem is pregnant with opportunities every problem every adversity is pregnant with an equal opportunity for advantage can i say it again every adversity is pregnant with an equal opportunity for advantage that's why they said necessity is the mother of invention this is time for innovation this is time for invention this is time to think of new ways this is time to show high as the ego it's a day that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like the eagle. Glory, glory be to the Lord. Glory be to the Lord. I, 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 my time is running up amazingly and I have, I have so much to show you. And I'm just started. And look at what the time going. Let, let me go and show you something else. God said to Jeremiah, buy anybody that is selling this wrestler buy it of course i think i need to show you a little more about that jeremiah 32 please go back to it jeremiah 32 i was reading from verse 7 the word of the lord came to jeremiah saying you know your uncle will come to you and that's why i'm talking to you people are going to start coming around you or you hear them discussing make preparation for a takeover buy he will say to you buy the my field that is in anatop for the right of redemption is yours then verse 8 so in verse 7 the man finally shows up and was making him the offer god told him in verse 6 now it's happening so hanai hanamel my uncle's son came to me in the court of the prison according to the word of the lord and said to me buy my field i prayed he's begging I pray it means I beg you that is in Anatok, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, 
<laughs> you will see what I'm telling you happening all around you. <laughs> then verse 9. And I bought the field of Hanamel. A country is about to be destroyed. You're buying land. Armies have surrounded everywhere. You're buying land. Does that make sense? Where do you keep your money during times of crisis and recession? Dollar, let me not talk about that. Where do you keep your money? Nothing is as real as real estate. There is no property that is as enduring as landed property. The other areas, but let's deal with that one. That's prophetical. God is talking, telling me to talk to you about this. And there is no investment that is as enduring as investment in what the ground produces. Whether it's solid mineral, whether it is. The riches of the earth will endure till the earth is destroyed. Whether it's agriculture, whether it's food production. I bought the field. And I weighed him the money. 70 shekels of silver. See how much he's buying that land. Verse, verse 10. And I subscribe the evidence. You get see of Get all the documents. Don't leave anything to chance. Because when the weather changes again, they will be angry. And then they want to go, go against what they agreed with you. You start running up and down now. You'll be sure. You have changed. No, no, no. Don't let, give them the chance to cheat you. Secure it now. Subscribe the evidence. Do paperwork. Seal it. And take witnesses. Weigh in the money in the balance. Let there be witnesses. Sometimes we even take video coverage where we are exchanging money and documents. The man is not willing to have witness. I know that he has ulterior motive. He has dubious plan. If he has integrity, he will be willing for their behavior. Verse 11. And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Barak, the son of Nerea, the son of Messiah, in the sight of Hanamel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. I made sure there were witnesses and we made sure we did the documents and made sure it was sealed and all of that. Next challenge is, how do I store such sensitive documents so that it will last 70 years when things turn back, it's still there so we can use it to lay claim. That one, I don't know whether I can say it on TV, but there are so many ways. For example, banks can help you to do that. Yeah, banks can help you to do that. But then it has to be blue chip companies you give such things, not the ones that can fold tomorrow. Hmm? It has to be banks that have endured storms. They have, they have years behind them. Hmm? <laughs> Lord. Okay, there's something, Holy Spirit. Let me read it for you. The Holy Spirit will give you understanding because I can't say that on TV. It's something the Holy Spirit, I will read for you. He will give you understanding. Go to the next verse. And I charged Barak before them saying, verse 14. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these evidences, these evidences of purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open. Put them in an 18 vessel that they may continue many days. They used to use earthen pots. You bury something in an earthen pot. You come out a thousand years, you stay there. <laughs> I don't want to say some things. In an earthen pot, clear pot, a thousand years, you stay there. You know how we got back some of these biblical, all these scrolls from which we got our Bible. Even books like the book of Enoch that was written 
about the creation of the world, about the time of Noah's flood. This is how they hid such documents. Some in caves, some buried in certain places. And they will give certain signs so that the generations coming. Let the Holy Spirit give you in your own understanding modern examples of this. But there are ways to store information. I hope you know you can store it in space, in clouds. Hmm? But in these days of internet fraud and whatever, you have to now know how to create the codes and the keys that people cannot. What if it's just property, land property? You know, nobody will go and get it and get your document to sell your land. But we are going to also be learning. Lord, 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 how to protect wealth in these last days because of what is coming. I will leave that for today. I will leave that for today. <laughs> I'm going to say something at this juncture. When prophecy somebody comes around your area, your country, your city, make plans to come. When this whole thing is over, we are going to be coming. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory, 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 glory be to the name of the Lord. Pray and digest just what you have heard. Just what you have heard. Wow. I, I'm just starting trying to open this thing and time is, is gone and I'm, I have not even gone into the main event of today, we're just at the desert and it's amazing. It's amazing. But, hmm, I need to show you one more thing before this time runs up. Jeremiah chapter 29. The Lord said, you need to know this. Jeremiah has secured his own future. Nebuchadnezzar invaded key pulled out, captured the king of Jerusalem, gushed out his eyes, carried him in chain to Babylon, destroyed the temple, ruined all the place for some unknown reason. It baffles me, but it's, it happened. He killed a lot of people, took a lot of them captive like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Thousands of Jewish kids took them like in chains down to Babylon. And later you're going to be seeing how the prophetic removed chains from Daniel and made him a prime minister again. But before we get to Daniel, let's look at Jeremiah now. The king finally invaded. He saw Jeremiah. He said, for you, you're a man of God. Yet he arrested other prophets. So, you know, he even carried Ezekiel. Ezekiel was one of those carried to Babylon. It was in Babylon that Ezekiel's prophetic ministry blew open. There were two prophets God developed right there in captivity. One was Daniel, the other was Ezekiel. In the latter years, he developed Haggai and Zechariah after they've returned back to start rebuilding. But these two, so Ezekiel was Daniel's contemporary. They were all both in captivity. But there was one man who pioneered this whole thing before them. It was Jeremiah. The king saw him, he said, you have two options. If you come with me to Babylon, you will be taken care of. You won't go through what others are going through. For you are the man of God that prophesied all these things. He said, but you have other, another option. You can choose to stay in this land with your people. Because I'm not removing everybody. The poor of the people, the ordinary people, I will leave them here so that this place does not remain. It's become completely desolate. He said, if you want to stay with your people, you can stay. Jeremiah said, your honor or your majesty, sir, whatever you call the king, is I prefer to stay back. The king said, go ahead. Nobody will touch you. And that's how he stayed back. Now, listen now, but he has bought that land. He has bought that land. So, Jeremiah was staying back in the land of Ju Judah. And then the Lord comes to him again and said, I have helped you you need to now help the rest of my people that are in captivity in Babylon. 
they have gone to Babylon and certain prophets are busy telling them you are going to live here within six months. You will live here in one year. And so they are not planning to do business. They are not making any economic plan. They are not developing families. They are in disadvantage because they are listening to these false prophets. I want you to write what I'm about to show you. Send it to them by a letter. Tell them to start buying land. Tell them to start building properties. Tell them to invest in real estate. Tell them to invest in farm. Tell them to get their children to marry the ones that are of age. Let them, let them marry the right kind of people. Let them marry Babylonian. Let them marry among the Jewish people. Tell them to grow and multiply. That in these 70 years, so-called captivity, they will grow. They will prosper so much. Even the Babylonians will envy them. Even in a time of depression in the time of recession in the time of captivity enterprise will keep prospering investment will keep prospering but now invest guided by the holy ghost i think i need to show you jeremiah 29 please please open it <laughs> verse 1 first Let's see. Take verse 1 to 4 so that you see. Jeremiah had to write this letter. He couldn't go to Babylon. Remember he told the king he was going to stay. So he wrote it and sent it to them and they were reading it in the Jewish communities so that the poor of God are not put in disadvantage. And now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem. He stayed back. Unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives. To the priest a lot of priests went into captivity to the prophets prophets went into captivity prophets and they are there suffering and they are men of god priests and they are men of god you see what prophecy does for you the man that sees the future is positioned differently is positioned differently I see that I'm going to be doing this series till June ending. The reason is that there is so much inside it. What this will do for you. I know what it has done for me. Prophets went into captivity. Priests went into captivity. And to all the people who Nebuchadnezzar has carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 2. After that, Jeconiah, the king, and the queen, and the Enoch, and the princes of Judah, and Jerusalem, and the carpenters, and the smiths were departed for. Even the king went into captivity. The queen went into captivity. The princes of Judah were all carried away. They were now slaves. Former king, now a slave. One recession, one problem can happen in the world and destroy a billionaire and reduce him to nothing. Destroy politicians. Destroy powerful men. You see why an authentic priesthood, authentic prophetic ministry is one of the greatest blessings a society can have. If you want to function as a minister, function with integrity in it. Because a time is coming, even these people prophesying knows that they all pay for it. Because the Bible said, can a blind man lead the blind? They will all both fall into a ditch. Take somebody with vision, with understanding. To provide directional leadership. Leadership is not about oppressing people or lording over. It's about serving people and helping them. Arrive at their destination. Taking them from where they are to where they are going. To where they are meant to be. Verse 3. By the hand of Elessa, he sent the letter. By the hand of Elessa, the son of Shaphan. And Gamaliel sent two guys, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar. So, you see, a new governor was placed over Judah by the king Nebuchadnezzar. His name is Zedekiah. Where the other one was carried captive. And he now needs to send a message. So, Jeremiah used the opportunity to put his letter. When you get there, deliver my letter. Because this time nobody could travel. 
but government officials could. So he gave him that. And because his government, whatever, they have security along. And then verse 4. Thought said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Yeah, the enemy did it to Babylonians, but God is using it to work out something again. For Israel, he's trying to clean up the idolatry and the iniquity in Israel and get for himself again a holy nation. That's one of the things God is trying to accomplish with this. This whole thing that looks like he's working against the church, God is using it to bet back purity. Purify the church, get back church on track. Get us back on our focus and get us ready for the last day's revival. After this, the next time, it might be the coming of the Lord real and the emergence of the Antichrist and you won't be able to do anything about it. Let us learn from now for what is happening now. Verse 5. Build houses. This is God Almighty talking to people that are in a recession. Build houses. First instruction. Real estate. What is the instruction he gave to Jeremiah himself? Real estate. Dwell in them. Plant gardens. What is the second instruction? Agriculture. Eat the fruit of them. What's the first instruction? Real estate. Where do I put my money? In times like this. Real estate. What's the second one? Agriculture. Produce food to feed your family. Produce to sell to others. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. There are some of these fruit trees. Some of you have land in your houses, in your compound. You don't grow trees. You only grow flowers. You better start planting real trees that give you mango and guava and purple and especially some of these essential ones that are good for our health. You are hearing about the importance of vitamin C, the importance of certain... Plant oranges in your house. Plant grapes in your house. Plant certain things. Next time you said they've shot everywhere there is nothing and you have all the basic things you need in your house. Have a place where you grow yam. You grow... If you can't start growing rice, if you can't grow things like that, the other things... Grow tomatoes. They grow everywhere. There are even some things that can be useful to you. You grow them as flowers, but their leaves are medicine. Don't just be ignorant of what is happening. Next time you'll be running around shop right and running around everywhere. You can't find food. Plant farms, plant crops and eat the fruit of them. Verse 6. God Almighty is talking to his people. Take ye wives and beget sons. Some of you now. Some of you, that girl have been hanging around you, have been playing around. This is the time. This is it. Yeah. Build family. Once you can grow, set up economic system, next thing is family. If you have not set up means of feeding yourself and them, don't go and start adding another person to it. Set up how you are going to take care of them. How to roof over them. How you are going to feed them. Then, wife and family. Look at the order God is following. Beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons. And give your daughters to husband. That they may bear sons and daughters. That ye may be increased there and not diminish. This is God. And for the church, it means we are going to get to that. Maybe next week. This is time to take the great commission serious. In the midst of all this end time, there is one constant. This gospel of the kingdom shall be published in all the earth as a witness. Then the end will come. It doesn't matter whether you are doing business, you are growing fast. You need all those basic things. But now you must engage yourself in the mission of God. Turn all these things that is going on as an advantage, an opportunity for winning the world. The harvest is ripe. In the midst of all this confusion and these things, this is the greatest time to win billions to Christ. Verse 7. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. Pray to the Lord for it. 
for in the peace thereof shall be your peace guess what city he was talking about babylon the babylonians destroyed our city jerusalem took us to their own country and you are asking me to be praying for their prosperity to seek their peace ladies and gentlemen i want you to listen listen very well you want me to pray for the well-being of babylon and to seek their peace god said because your own prosperity is connected to that land doing well if you're going to build those houses and it's not going to be bombed down pray that there will be security where you are living if you're going to plant those farm and you want to reap the crops pray there is safety and peace where you are pray only for, not only for the peace but the prosperity of the land because that's how you prosper if you are planting a crop and you destroy the productivity of the land where your crop will grow how will you get the harvest so some of you are destroying your own countries you are attacking your nation you are destroying everything you want a nation to be pulled down and yet that's the nation where you live what kind of demon got into your head who is teaching you that for which bible are you reading that the bible said pray for those in authority and this is an enemy country that destroyed the jewish people yet god almighty is the one tasking jeremiah to tell them to seek for the peace of that even if the people are going against your own people pray for the well-being of the government bind these demonic power that is disturbing the people in authority ask for wisdom to come upon ask that they would rule with justice and peace because that is how you too will prosper as long as you don't pray like that your businesses your properties your houses because the enemy will be pushing them against you pray for those in authority pray for your pastors don't be among those attacking your leaders the bible warns that the last days will be a time of lawlessness lawlessness in the family children against parents lawlessness in nation nations against nations don't be involved in that that's the gross darkness that will cover the earth we are called to be on the other side to be the light to be the one showing the examples pray for the peace of the land as long as you live in any nation doesn't matter where you are listening to me from around the world pray for the peace of that land pray to god for things to go with elections to go with for god to give you godly leaders that will help move that country forward we want to buy bind the works of the enemy how he's using people in authority to come against god's plan bind it after giving them this message that will take care of their personal prosperity and national corporate and social prosperity god is teaching his people you don't just prosper on your own you don't live in a vacuum seek the well-being of the environment where you operate if you do business in a city create social activities that you do for the community where you do your business if you have a company in a particular community sometimes go there and take care of the poor in that environment because he affects your business it will not only grow your customer base it will end up leading to greater returns for that company understand the importance of social responsibility and social engagement sometimes go there do something for the police you know find the police the security agencies that do small projects for them buy them table buy them chair buy them ac if they don't have in the office it will end up benefiting that company understand that the businesses you're building don't exist in vacuum there is a connection between your business and environment where you operate you run a school in a particular environment sometimes go and do a social project for the area boys in that area don't wait till they come to kidnap your student build houses in a certain environment because sometimes do social projects for the people in that environment don't wait till they come to rob you understand the connection oh my time is up understand the connection and then verse 8 and i'll end and then verse 8 yes for thus said the lord the god of israel let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you neither hack into you the dreams that they cause you to dream verse 9 for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name and i have not sent them verse 10 verse 10 for thus said the Lord, after 70 years be accomplished, 
at Babylon. I will visit you, perform my good work towards you in causing you to return. You can imagine someone like Daniel that was around 70 when he arrived. By the time you ask 70, man was around his 90s when they said they rebuilt it. If he didn't have this information, he would have wasted his whole life. He wouldn't be a prime minister because he wouldn't have gone to school. He wouldn't have prepared himself. He wouldn't have position. He wouldn't have had a house. The man was living big in Babylon. Yet he was a man, a prophet. He was so powerful in that place. And yet he was committed to working out the plan of God till the people returned. He was one always fasting and praying for the redemption of Israel. But he prayed for the position of understanding. 70 years. When I start showing you the events heading to the coming of the Antichrist and the coming of the Lord, the coming of the one world and all the things that are going to be happening in these last days. Jesus in the midst of it all said, occupy till I come. Luke chapter 19. Turn to it as we are rounding up. From verse 11. Jesus said, don't sit idle as God's people. As they heard these things, Jesus was teaching as they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable because he was near to Jerusalem because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Because sometimes when we talk about the coming of the Lord, some people think it's an excuse for laziness to sit idle and not be. So as Jesus was talking about, they thought that the kingdom of God would show up immediately. So he had to tell them a parable to teach them how to live in the operate in the last days look at what he taught the verse 12 he said therefore a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return he's talking about him you see he had to finish dying on the cross go back to heaven to be crowned king of king lord of lords and be given dominion then he can return to start his reign between that time he ascended and the time he returned, about 2,000 years period has elapsed. A certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. You can't exercise power you have not been given. And that dominion was not to be given to him till he has gone to the cross. Verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered to them ten pounds and said to them, occupy till i come until you see jesus return occupy be engaged be engaged in the great commission be engaged in business be engaged in your career be making money be developing your business be pursuing your career be marrying and raising children don't sit down idle. say you're waiting for jesus to come when he come he must meet you busy occupy till I come. he said to them, he delivered 10 pounds to them and tell them occupy till i come verse 14. but his citizen hated him and sent the message after him saying we don't want you to rule over us that's the people of the world that's why when he returned there was the battle of armageddon that's a different subject we'll deal with later verse 15. and it came to pass that when he was returned having received the kingdom he commanded these servants to be called to him whom he had given the money that they, he might know how much everyone has gained by trading you see the first people he judged was the church the people of god after that he now judged the nations our own is judgment based on what we did with the resources both financial both the anointing the gospel everything he put in our hands to touch the world we're going to be assessed what did you do with your money what did you do with your time what did you do with your talents what did you do with the wisdom i gave you what did you do with all the knowledge you were getting in church even what you are learning now what did you do with it all the teaching what how many souls did you win how what did you how much did you help to expand the kingdom what did you do with all these resources what did you do with the influence with the connection Then he's going to summon the world and divide them between sheep and goat. 
and he's going to judge them by how they treated his people and how they treated the nation of Israel. They are going to be judged by how they treated the church and by how they treated the nation of Israel. But we that are God's people are going to be judged by how we manage, how we steward the things that God committed into the ministry. The stewardship of ministry. God called you. What did you do with that calling? How many lives did you impact? God gave you anointing. How, what did you do with that anointing? God gave you resources. You are blessed by God. What did you do with your money? Did you just build things for yourself and abandon the kingdom of God? What did you do with relationships and the, 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 that God blessed you with? What did you do with them? What did you do with your time? You know when we say I'm 50 years old, I'm 70 years old, you are getting yourself indicted. What did you do with all those years? Show what you produce with that life. Did you waste your life? Did you waste God's resources? And that's where a lot of Christians are going to get into trouble. You better not be idle in the last days. You better be engaged in the mission of God. You better be engaged touching lives. You better be engaged expanding the kingdom. You better be engaged winning souls and making disciples. And then practically speaking in the physical, you better also be engaged creating wealth, doing things that will help you take care of your family, take care of yourself, and then sponsor the gospel at the same time. You better not have an excuse when Jesus returns. Listen to that story. It came to pass that when he was returned, he asked all his servants to be called to whom he had given the money that he might know how much everyone has gained by trading. Verse 16. Then came the first one saying, Lord, your pound has gained 10 pounds. Watch what the Lord said to him. Verse 17. And he said to him, well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in very little you will have authority over 10 cities. This man is going to rule 10 cities because the resources God gave him, he, he has gained 10 pounds. So God is going to reward people when he comes according to their level of productivity. According to their level of stewardship. Their faithfulness in stewardship. Learn to be faithful where you are. Learn to serve faithfully. God does not reward visibility. God rewards faithfulness god does not reward position what god rewards is faithfulness god rewards productivity he doesn't reward visibility he doesn't reward titles he rewards productivity what did you achieve for the kingdom he doesn't reward position what he rewards is faithfulness two things he looks out for faithfulness and productivity you multiplied what i gave you you were faithful in managing my resources my house those of you that are placed over people like church pastors and other how you handled god's people how much have you grown that work how many souls have you won? how many disciples have you made be faithful where you are actually if you are serving under people be faithful it's from there that god promotes you to bigger things your promotion, your future depends on what you're doing with what you have now. The next thing God is going to give you depends on what you're doing with what he has given you now. The man that had 10, okay, his pounds has grown, has become 10 pounds. He said, have dominion over 10 cities. Verse 18. And the second one came, so Lord, your pound has gained five pounds. Look at verse 19. And the Lord said to him, be thou over five cities. He gained five pounds, five cities. God is just and faithful. He gives to every man according to his work, not according to his talk. God does not reward profession. He rewards productivity. Verse 20. And another came saying, Lord, behold, your pound which I kept laid up in a napkin. You see, excuses. He did nothing with what he was given. I hid it, I wrapped it in a napkin and, and hid it somewhere. Verse 21. For I fear thee because you are an austere man. You take where you have not laid down. You reap where you have not sowed. Verse 22. And he said unto him, out of your own mouth I will judge you. You are a wicked servant. 
he knew that I was an austere man, reaping where I did not sow. Verse 23, why didn't you take my money and put it in a bank so that I would have received it with interest? You see, anything that is not appreciating is depreciating. If you keep any type of capital and it's not growing, it's not multiplying in value, after some years, when you bring it back and return it exactly as it is, in some cases, he has lost 50% of the value. There are even situations where sometimes they lose up to 70% of the value. That's what this guy didn't know. If you are not moving forward, you are moving backward. You are not standing still. You know when every other person is moving? Have you noticed that when you are driving in a car, when you are moving, the trees start moving, but they move backward. Anything that is standing still is moving. Once every other person is moving forward, those things that are standing still are moving backward. They don't know. If you are not making progress, you are moving in opposite direction. After a while, they have left you behind. That's why he gave us the command to occupy. Be busy. Be productive. Be engaged. Don't sit idle and be complaining and be making excuses. Of course, this servant is not only that they took what he had, they took that one and gave it to the man that had the highest level of productivity. If you read down, and the people said, Lord, but the man already has 10. And because to him he has more will be given. The person that is producing result is the one God increases the more. But to him that has not, even the little he has will be taken away from him. If you read it in Matthew, God said, take that unprofitable servant, cast him into outer darkness. That's how that minister went to hell. That's how that believer went to hell. He said, cast him into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. I hope you know that's not heaven. That place where there is weeping and national teeth. Where place that is outer darkness is hell. He was unfaithful in stewardship. And there are about seven major things God has committed to us. There's a stewardship of your time. There's a stewardship of your talents, your gifts, your skills, and all that. There's stewardship of your treasure your money what did you do with it did you use it to advance the kingdom of god sponsor the gospel help the poor did you use it to impact lives there is still worship of the temple your body your body is the temple of the holy spirit your health did you manage it well there is still worship of your family and friends relationships that god gave you these five are basic but for every believer there is a still worship of the mysteries of god the gospel did you preach it and win souls and disciple make men? What did you do with that? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. We are giving power that can save lives. Are you saving lives with it? And for those who are called into ministry, a stewardship of that ministry. Pastors are going to give account of that. But for every one of us, there, everybody has a purpose, an assignment. You have a company, you have a business. How did you run it? How do, what are you doing with it? Whatever God committed into your hand, your job, your career, you see worship of your vocation. See, it doesn't end with ministry. But it starts with the stewardship of your life, your time. You're not living a wasted life. You're living an invested life. The judgment seat of Christ will bring all of this to bear. How you conducted your life. Did you live for Christ? Did you live godly life? That's where it starts. Then you will move to your talents, your treasure, and all of that. You, how did you use your money? Did you just spend it only on yourself? Let me read something for you. This is my concluding thoughts. This is from the Dr. Kiwumi Adesina. He was uh, in charge of agriculture under the former president in this country, 
and now he heads the African Development Bank. Hmm? I was heading the Minister of Agriculture back here at before he went further. Look at what he said. By 2030, that's the year from now. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. By 2030, the size of the food and agri business in Africa will reach one trillion dollars. One trillion dollars will be how much in Naira? How many trillion Naira? 400 trillion Naira. For those of you in your different countries, one trillion dollars. This is just in Africa before we talk about your own country. If you are thinking of how to make money, that is the sector to be in. We said our key in this prophecy some is seeing and owning the future. Understanding the times and knowing what Israel ought to do. Let me read it again. By 2030, 10 years from now. When do you start going to 10 years? Now! The size of the food and agri business in Africa will reach $1 trillion. If you are thinking of how to make money, that is the sector to be in. Let me read another thing. This is by one of our fathers of faith in Nigeria, Reverend Pade Tuku. He said, at the time when Jerusalem was under attack by Babylonian army, it was obvious that the nation would fall, that the inhabitants would be carried into captivity. It was clear that properties, businesses would be forfeited. There is a man living in the land by the name of Hanamel, when he looked at the future, the thing he saw after that whole thing was hardship, misery. Because it was inversion or destruction. We can. Ash at hand was more. Assured, but was more secure to him to lay hands on some money than to keep a property. On the other hand, God made Jeremiah to know that beyond misery, he had a glorious plan for the people of Israel. Right now, people have defined the future after COVID 19 pandemic with the sense of joy. But would that be all to define the future? No. God is refining the future different from how the world is refining it. He is preparing the ground for a bountiful harvest. He is preparing the ground for a mighty harvest of souls. The misfortune of COVID-19 will not define the future. God's plan is what will define the future. God is planning for an abundant harvest. God will use this misfortune to work on the people to prepare their hearts to receive Christ. He's looking at a mighty revival and a mighty harvest of soul that will follow this pandemic. God has also shown me that beyond even the harvest of souls, there will be people who are going to be emerge, economic giants are going to emerge, leaders of industries, all kinds of things are going to happen. Take advantage of now and see what is coming and position yourself. Father, I pray for everyone, your children all over the world that have listened to today's broadcast. 
let that same anointing that came upon Daniel, that came upon Jeremiah, that came upon Joseph, that came upon Isaac. I've talked to them about all of these men who prospered during adversity, during famine, during recession, during some of the worst times in human history. Let that same anointing come upon them. The anointing for foresight. The anointing for strategic foresight. Give them that grace to see what is coming. The opportunities that are coming out as a result of all this. Lead them into them. Into these opportunities. Show them their own place where they can secure their future. And I bless them, Lord. Like Isaac, they will sow they will prosper in the land and they will go forward and become great and become greater. And I also pray for every one of them that they will catch the vision of the master to take advantage of this time to win the harvest of the world that is now ripe, that is getting rotten. That every one of them will rise up and no one will bury their talent. No one will waste the opportunity that they will see the huge opportunity that you have created for the church and take advantage of it. And now, if you have not given your life to Christ, put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you. Maybe you are not sure of your future. If Jesus were to come now, you are not sure of what your future will be. Because the coming of the Lord is around the corner. But God is teaching us how to live till he shows up finally. You have not given your life to Christ. Put your hands on your chest. Say, Lord, I recognize that I'm a sinner. Or maybe you are a backslider. Tell him, Lord, I recognize that I'm a backslider. I've turned away from you. But I repent of my sins, Lord. Forgive me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary. Wash me from every unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. I believe that you died for me on the cross. You shed your blood for my redemption. Now, Lord, I accept you as my Savior. And I confess you and declare you as my Lord. And I submit my life to you. I will live for you all the days of my life. And, Lord, take me on this journey. And lead me till the day I see you face to face. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And I pray for every one of you that the greatest miracle of all, the miracle of salvation and the miracle of the new birth will take place in your life. That the Holy Spirit will come upon you, wash you with the blood of Jesus, give you a brand new nature, the nature of Christ, fill you with the Holy Spirit and empower you to begin to live the Christian life. And I bless you in the name of the Lord that things will go well for you you will run this race successfully when it's over when the curtain is drawn that you'll be standing and be able and jesus will be able to say well done good and faithful servant god bless you i want to challenge you all of you that are giving your life to christ call us send us a message use one of the lines on the screen and send us a message tell us what has happened to you and all of you that have watched tell us how the broadcast has been a blessing to you the different things you're doing, innovations, ideas coming to you because of this, you know. And then like Isaac did, he said Isaac sold in that land. Don't just sow businesses and plant companies and start ideas, plant a financial seed to help us reach more families, to expand the broadcast so we can reach more countries and more nations. Everybody need to hear what you are hearing. And if you're being blessed by it, you want to help us, partner with us to help spread it. We need to get on more networks to be able to reach a wider network. We need to reach the whole world. And, you know, call us, let us know. Use one of the lines, you know. And then if you're looking for uh, where to sow a seed, I'm sure they are showing you some bank accounts you can reach out to. And if you're confused on anything, call one of those lines and get some direction. God bless you. I'll see you next week. God bless you. I praise you, Lord. You were my strength and my reward.
Morgen. 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 Morgen.